So one week in Patagonia, what do you do? Before we travel to Patagonia, I probably first always thought of the clothing brand. But after about having a week here, we have a little bit better idea of what this incredible area is like. So we figured we kind of share some of our things that we've learned. First of all, Patagonia, the area is huge. It's the southern part of Chile and Argentina and it has so many different things to experience. We only had one week and we had no idea where to start on what we wanted to see. After doing a lot of research, we ended up deciding on basing our time from two areas, from El Calafate in Argentina and from Puerto Natales in Chile. But before we get into our itinerary, we'll talk about some of the main categories of things you can experience in the areas of Patagonia we were in. There's like five different categories that we pretty much broke it down into. There's hiking, you can see wildlife, you can go see glaciers. I don't know the other five. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's three. There's hiking, there's glaciers, and tours around the park where you can see a ton of different wildlife. The first category is hiking and you definitely can't talk about Patagonia without talking about the hiking because there's some world famous hikes right here in this area. The two most popular are probably the W and the O treks but those are multi-day hikes and we didn't have the time for that so we wanted to see the two most popular peaks in these pictures here. Both of those end up being a day trek and they actually are very, very similar. The first one we did is called the Laguna de los Trace Hike to Fitzroy in Argentina. And the second one we did is in Chile in Torres del Paine National Park and it's the base of the Towers Trek. They are not anywhere close to each other in location, but they're almost identical as far as hikes go. So basically the way that both of the hikes break down is it starts out in like kind of an uphill early morning wake up climb and then it levels off for a while and it's not too hard of hiking in and out of woods but the last kilometer is uphill it's only one kilometer but both of them have an uphill climb that takes about an hour both hikes are about eight to nine hour day treks and a little over 20 kilometers they both end with incredible views the question is which one did we like better? I think I would choose the Fitzroy hike in Glacier National Park in Argentina. We ended up having better weather then, so it seemed like the view was a little bit more worth it, but in all, they're pretty much the same. Without like describing them to each other, we realized that we both described them the same. Compared to the other hike, the easy parts are harder, and the harder part is easier. That's literally in my exact, exact way. <laughs> if you could only pick one and you were already in the area, I'd have to go with the Fitzroy hike. But if you're only gonna be spending your time in Torres del Paine, it's probably not worth taking two buses to another country just to experience a similar hike. We did one of the hikes without a guide and one with a guide, so if you're looking to save some money, it's pretty easy to do it without a guide. I would recommend renting some hiking poles, especially if it's gonna be rainy. We did the Fitzroy hike without them and we were fine, but it's helpful to have them. We're very amateur hikers. We were not traveling to do hikes, so we decided that we weren't going to do the hikes without hiking boots. We just <laughs> did it with sneakers. They both are definitely doable with sneakers but you definitely do want to be careful if it's raining that way you don't twist an ankle at this point on the way up i was starting to think all the thoughts of like how much longer every step i take up i have to take back down but right now i am so happy i am loving this hike and i'm really thankful we're doing it she's saying that before one of us slips Another very popular thing to do in both areas is seeing glaciers. In Argentina, we saw the Perito Marino Glacier, and in Chile, we saw the Grey Glacier. My personal preference was the Perito Marino Glacier. Actually, even our guides here said, that's the better one, uh, just because it feels so massive when you're looking down at it. There's like a 70 meter cliff, and it's a very unique experience where there's this piece of land that is right up next to the glacier. So you can be standing, looking eye level at this massive cliff. Pretty much every 30 minutes, we saw some sort of calving with the ice breaking off and hearing the loud splashes. The Great Glacier was also awesome. We got to see some huge icebergs that had just recently broken off and they were so blue because they said that the ice is so dense that when it's part of the glacier, the sun can't penetrate. So it makes this like deep dark blue color. But 
it's more of like a gradual increase so without the icebergs it kind of just looks like a big pile of snow with some big ice chunks sticking out of it at both glaciers you can do a boat tour or a kayak tour we ended up doing the kayak tour in Perita Marino and the boat tour at Great Glacier and we were really happy that we did the kayak tour kind of like the hikes that if you're in Torres Alpine then the Great Glacier is a great thing to go see but if you're already in Argentina and you can only pick one glacier experience then my preference is the glacier that I can't say Perita Marina one thing I didn't really how blue this water would be. I know I should have known because it's glacier water, but it's really blue. So why are we saying that the hike is better in one and the glacier is better in one, but Torres Alpine is most popular? Well, I think that's because the entire national park is just beautiful and it really comes down to the tours of the park that makes us so popular. We didn't have the time or desire to really do like a nine day trek. So we were still hoping that we could see some of the beautiful areas of the park without doing a lot of trekking. And when we did the day tour of Torres Alpine, we got to experience that. It's amazing to be able to go around the park, see the park from different angles, see all the different wildlife. I think one of my favorite things is seeing the wild guanacas that are running around. And no matter where you are in the park, you have this incredible view of the mountain ranges. So if you can only pick one area in Chile or Argentina, I it kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you're going just for hiking and you're on a limited budget, then actually I would probably say go to the Argentina side unless you're doing multi-day treks. If you're doing multi-day treks, Torres del Paine is probably the most popular place. We were really happy that we got to experience both Chile and Argentina Patagonia. But it was kind of difficult to figure out when we were reading online like the different areas and transportation from one to the other. So here's a little recap of what we've learned. If you fly in and out of Argentina, you're flying into El Calafate. If you're flying in and out of Chile, you're flying in and out of Punta Arenas. Flying into El Calafate in Argentina, you can go an hour and a half to get to the Perita Marina Glacier, which you can either drive to or get a bus to pretty easily. And then it's about a three hour bus ride to El Chao 10, which was also a pretty easy and cheap bus round trip. One of the things to note that we are so happy that we did read is the bus from El Calafate to El Chao 10 to do the Fitzroy hike is an incredible view. You can book a double decker bus and it's important to try to book the upper level, the front row, so that way the entire three hour drive, you have an unobstructed view of seeing Fitzroy for a long, long time as you're driving into the town. There are actually assigned seats for HUD didn't know that <laughs> and sat down in the front seat until the girl kicked him out. <laughs> El Calafate is pretty much like a touristy hikers place. They have a ton of different uh, stores downtown. All of them, they're selling the same things of different outdoor gear, but it's definitely set up as a touristy um, base area. And then El Chaten, the smaller town that most of the day or multi-day treks leave from that's about three hours out of the way, that's pretty much just hiker town. There's some restaurants, there's some hostels, um, but definitely not nearly as touristy. But it's pretty cool that the town of El Chao Tan is right at the base of where you leave from for your hike. And there's plenty of Airbnbs, hostels, and hotels that you can stay in right there. Whereas opposed to on the Chile side, there's two different towns also, but it's a little bit different than in Argentina. You fly in and out of Punta Arenas, and then you take a three hour bus to get to Puerto Natales if you want to see Torres Alpine. Torres Alpine National Park is then another like hour and a half bus ride from the town of Puerto Natales and there's not a whole lot of accommodations outside of Puerto Natales unless you're paying for a more expensive area or you want to stay in a small, small town. Pretty much either place, there's a ton of different things to do around, but if you're trying to look for the main things that most people do, uh, that's kind of the breakdown of the different towns. And then to bus from El Calafate in Argentina, to Puerto Natales in Chile. It's a pretty, pretty simple five and a half hour bus ride. Um, it's only $25 USD at the current moment and the border crossing and everything was very easy. Pretty comfortable bus and it seemed like a 
decently short time for a five and a half hour bus ride. So for our one week in Patagonia, here's what we experienced. We also did the trip starting from Buenos Aires and ending in Santiago, but you can easily switch this itinerary and just do it exactly the opposite way from Santiago to Buenos Aires or just stay in one country only and experience that side. There's plenty of things to do. So for our itinerary, day one, we flew from Buenos Aires to El Calafate and pretty much took a bus directly then from El Calafate to El Chaltén. Day two, we did the Laguna de los Tres hike in El Chaltén to Fitzroy. We came directly back and took the El Chaltén bus back to El Calafate and spent the night there. Day three, we busted the Perina Marina Glacier and it was beautiful. We even did a kayak tour there. Day four was a travel day. We jumped on, had about five and a half hours on a bus and headed over to Chile. The next day, day five, we traveled from Puerto Natales to Torres del Paine National Park and we did our day trek there to the base of the towers. We ended up sleeping that night right outside the park, had an incredible view. Day six, we woke up and we did a tour of the park in a van. And then day seven, we did the Greg Glacier Boat Tour. Day eight, now headed out to take a bus from Puerto Natales to Punta Arenas and then a flight from Punta Arenas to Santiago. So a lot of traveling in a short amount of time, but it didn't feel too rushed. I know we only touched the surface of all the things there are to see in Patagonia, but I'm really happy we got to experience it. So this is our itinerary, but there's tons of other things that we had researched that we still would have loved to do if we had enough time or money to do those things. Some of the main highlights that I would have loved to experience are there's some islands down here that you can go see filled with penguins. Another thing that's amazing is to do some of the longer day, uh, multi-day treks. There's the southernmost town in the world that is down here. And then ultimately someday it would be amazing to be able to go take a cruise to Antarctica and see the seventh continent. So if you have a limited amount of time like us, about a week in Patagonia is enough to experience a little bit of the main thing. We're so happy we got to come here and experience the beauty of all Patagonia has to offer. I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast And every moment counts, baby, I don't want to miss a thing